Hi, it's Romeo Bruni, and today I'm really excited because we're going to talk about my two favorite stars in the sky, Betelgeuse and Rigel. Betelgeuse and Rigel are quite famous, and they're part of one of the most obvious constellations in the sky, and I'm sure you'll recognize it. We'll zoom right in there, and you can see Orion's belt, the three stars, one, two, three, and then on either side of Orion's belt, you have Betelgeuse on one side and Rigel on the other. Orion's nebula, by the way, a very famous cloud, uh, star-forming molecular cloud is right there below the belt. But today we're going to be talking about Rigel and Betelgeuse. Here they are again, the three stars making up Orion's belt, Orion's nebula below, and blue Rigel, and very red Betelgeuse. In fact, Betelgeuse is the reddest star in the sky. Both are incredibly famous. Let's compare them, it's quite interesting. They're both approximately 18 solar masses. When you see a big M with a little thing like that underneath it, that's referring to a solar mass. And we usually compare stars in the universe to our sun. It's simpler than using absolute weights. So in terms of size, both Betelgeuse and Rigel are quite similar in size. Again, approximately 18 solar suns. What's different, and of course they're both supergiants. And when you're a supergiant, that means you've already evolved off the main sequence of stars, uh, off the main sequence in the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and you're uh, already a dying star. Um, notice with the mass of uh, a, a much greater amount than the Sun, it brings into play a very important principle in astronomy based on size. And that is that the, the um, temperature that a star burns at is proportional to the mass to the fourth power. So a sun that is 10 times bigger than the sun, uh, a star that is ten, 10 times bigger than the sun would shine at 10 to the fourth, that's 100, that's, that's 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Um, therefore, it's going to go through <coughs> its energy quite a bit faster. When you do the math, it works out that the longevity of a sun of a star is proportional to one over the mass to the third. So the longevity is proportional to one over the mass to the third, meaning a star that is uh, a 10 times bigger than the sun will live um, one thousandth the t amount of time as our sun. Conversely, a star that's only one tenth the size of our sun will live a thousand times longer than our sun. So in terms of how long stars live, their size is the key. And in fact, their size is the key when you look at the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, which really just correlates on a graph the luminosity versus the mass. And usually it's done so that the mass is greater on this side. So the biggest stars are also the most luminous and they're going to be blue. So you're going to have all the, the big blue stars like this. And as you come down the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, because the mass is decreasing, the temperature decreases, so they're going to burn at lower and lower temperatures. So the biggest stars are the most luminous and they're blue. And as the mass decreases, the stars become increasingly red. And this is the main sequence of the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. All stars go through this sequence. In this sequence, they're in perfect thermal and hydrodynamic equilibrium, hydrostatic equilibrium. The pressure and the temperature are in complete perfect equilibrium. They don't vary in size and they're very stable and the color stays the same. Once they start to die, and of course when they start to die, it is going to depend on the mass inverse to the third. 
So stars up here that are very heavy are only going to live 10 million years or so. Uh, heavy medium stars like our sun are going to live 10 billion years. It's a thousand times longer. And the various, uh, oh, sorry, the very smallest stars are going to live trillions of years. So Betelgeuse and Rigel are both unusual in that they're very big stars, and they are actually a minority in the uh, star community. The majority of stars are smaller, like our sun. So if you consider both Betelgeuse and Rigel, just approximately, they're approximately 10 times bigger than the sun, so they're going to live one thousandth the lifespan of our sun. So if our sun is living 10 billion years, these stars are only going to live 10 million years. And in fact, the age of Betelgeuse and Rigel are, are very similar. Uh, Betelgeuse is 10 million years and Rigel is 8 million years old. So that means they're both nearing the end of their lifetime. And that's again manifest by the, by the fact that they're uh, giants because once you my, once you come off the main sequence, once you've burnt up all your he hydrogen to helium and you have a helium core, no longer hydrogen burning at the core, but a helium burning at the core, you migrate off the main sequence and you always migrate off this direction. So the biggest stars become uh, giants, super giants in fact. They can become red or blue depending on their situation. So you get the red and super, the red and blue supergiants. Normal stars, stars like our sun, are going to migrate off this way and are going to become red giants. So our sun eventually, in five billion years, is going to become a red giant, and then it's going to fluff off its outer layers and shrink down and become a white dwarf. But that's a, a matter for another day. Back to Betelgeuse and, and Rigel. Uh, so Betelgeuse, you'll see, is eight in terms of radius, is 800 times the solar radius. Again, R with a little O under it means uh, solar radius. So it's 800 times bigger than the sun. Rigel is also huge. It's 80 times bigger than the sun. Betelgeuse, again, it's a red giant, so it's going to be at a lower color. Its temperature on the photosphere, the outer part of the star, is 3,700 degrees Kelvin. Rigel is burning a lot harder at 11,000 degrees Kelvin. As we discussed before, because these stars are, are both 10 to 20 times bigger uh, in mass, their luminosity or how bright they're going to shine is going to vary, which is proportional to the temperature. The luminosity and the temperature both vary by the fourth power of the mass. So since they're approximately 10 times bigger, they're going to burn uh, approximately 10 to the fourth, which is 100,000, in which case it's higher than 10, so it's going to be more like 120,000 times as bright as our sun. So both Betelgeuse and Rigel that we see uh, up in the sky are actually burning. Their actual luminosity is 125,000 times brighter than the sun. Again, Betelgeuse is a red supergiant. Rigel is a blue supergiant. That's important. Because these stars are both so large, any star over eight solar masses, uh, when it begins to die, will die as a supernova. Uh, either a type 1b or c, or a type 2 supernova. And those are the most explosive, cataclysmic, brightest events in the sky. Betelgeuse and Rigel could go at any day. It's predicted they could go any time now within the next 100,000 years, so don't set your alarm clock yet. And when they go, they're going to be the brightest thing in the sky, rivaling the full moon, and be visible during the day and visible for weeks after they blow. Can you imagine in the past, before they knew of supernovas, what they, they must have thought uh, when they saw something like that? immediately light the sky to that degree. They must have thought the end of the world was coming. The other very interesting thing about Betelgeuse is that it's a runaway star. Runaway stars are stars unlike the majority of stars in our galaxy and in most galaxies that faithfully revolve around the black hole 
at the center of the galaxy, in our case, Sagittarius A star at the center of the Milky Way, rather than revolving around and around like all the other stars, Betelgeuse is a runaway star, meaning it's got a course that eventually is going to take it right out of the galaxy. It's not following any rules, it's a rogue star. There's three ways the stars can become rogue stars. In a three a body gravitational system, it can just work out that sometimes one star gets flung out of that system. That's what's thought to have happened with Betelgeuse when it was flung out of the Orion system eons ago. The other two ways are if there's a supernova explosion, it can fling a star out, or if there's a close encounter with another star or another galaxy, and then the tidal forces can take a star and fling it out of its normal motion and set it on a course to leave the galaxy. Um, both Rigel and Betelgeuse, of course, because they're off the main sequence, the main hutzbung russell uh, sequence, all stars, once they get off the main sequence, become very unstable. They're no longer in thermostatic and thermostatic and hydrostatic equilibrium, and they'll start to pulsate. In addition to pulsating, they're going to lose a lot of uh, mass via coronal mass ejections or massive solar winds. In fact, you may remember that Betelgeuse was very famous in uh, 2019 when over a period of weeks it suddenly began to go dim. And the world was wondering what's going on and the uh, media uh, proclaimed that it was the end of Betelgeuse and it was about to go supernova. And here's an actual picture of of Betelgeuse in 2019. On this side you see it at its normal luminosity and then you can see it later as it seems to be less luminous in an asymmetrical way, I may add too. And luckily, luckily, thanks to Hubble, we were able to view what happened and this is actually what happened. You can see that Betelgeuse actually blew off a big chunk of its external plasma and a coronal mass ejection, just like the sun does very frequently, but at a, a level millions of times greater than the sun. And that ejection sent off a lot of dust and crap into the uh, surroundings around Betelgeuse and essentially obscured Betelgeuse. So it was like a big dust cloud hanging over Betelgeuse, which of course obscured the light and caused a noticeable depreciation in the light coming from Betelgeuse, visible to the naked eye. You could look up and say, whoa, that's not the Betelgeuse I know. But luckily, because this dust uh, dissipated over many months, Betelgeuse came back to its, its old self and is brightly shining again in the sky, uh, yet again the tenth brightest star in the sky. Um, Rigel being the seventh brightest. So these two stars are both exceptionally bright. So to summarize, Betelgeuse and Rigel, they lived fast and furious lives. They were extreme carnivores and went through their energy supply extremely rapidly and thus are going to live only 10 million years. And being so sizable, they're going to go out, not in a whimper, like a white dwarf, like our sun, but they're going to go off in a massive supernova explosion that could happen at any time. You could be gazing at it when suddenly it'll flash incredibly blight. And when it does, you'll look at it and say, hey, I just know what happened. It's a supernova, man. Supernova. I'm Romeo Bruni. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.